Wandering around the trendier parts of London today, it's hard not to notice that facial hair is back. This current beard trend has already lasted a lot longer than many have over the past 20 years or so. Now, of course, beards and moustaches have always gone in and out of fashion, and it's easy to think of them as some quirky side note to history. But in fact, the decision to wear facial hair, or not, are closely linked to how men have viewed themselves through time. It's hard to imagine today, but at the end of the 18th century, this place was at the heart of a revolution in men's personal grooming. Today, the market for shaving products is worth billions. Now, most men probably own a razor and don't think anything about using it on themselves. Around 1750, though, things were very different. This was a truly beardless age, and ideals of masculinity were changing. While the Tudors and Stuarts saw the beard as the ultimate symbol of manhood, the Georgian male was refined, elegant and neat, his face smooth. Shaving the face literally opened up the countenance, but it also symbolised a mind that was open to new enlightened ideals. To be stubbly like me was the very height of vulgarity. Before the 1750s, most men would have got a shave at the local barber's shop. Now, barbers had originally been barber surgeons, and shaving was linked to older ideas of the body as consisting of four humours. Shaving the face was ridding the body of a form of waste. But barbers sometimes had something of a bad reputation. A combination of blunt blades and clumsy practitioners made this a sometimes uncomfortable experience. Just look at the expressions of the poor customers in these satirical images. Zounds, how you scrape, cries one customer, while another screams as the distracted barber is about to slice off his nose. Men like James Stoddart and John Savini, however, were about to change all that. Using the brand new cast steel, they were busy creating new, elegant razors. These images of surviving instruments show just how lethally sharp these razors could be. Georgian razor adverts weren't all that much different to today's. Of course, there weren't any fast cars and footballers, but they're all about creating the idealised man and speaking to masculine traits like hardness and self-control. Perfumers sold other things like toilet kits, including everything a travelling gentleman might require. There were even aftershaves, fragrances and creams. This was a whole new world of male pampering. But the razors made by prominent makers like Stoddart and Savini weren't just cheap, throwaway items. The average model of their razors cost between three and six shillings, around about 20 to 30 pounds in today's money. Now, whilst that might not seem a lot, this was a time when the average labourer probably only earned 20 shillings in an entire week. These were luxury items beyond the reach of the ordinary man. Today, to be shaved by a barber is something of a luxury. But if I'm to pass as a respectable Georgian, it's time to lose the beard. Every inch, the smooth, enlightened man. I don't suppose you sell wigs as well, do you? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs>